Cambodia's Commerce Minister Sun Jantal has just concluded a trade mission in the United States. He is currently in Washington, D.C. to give a talk about investment opportunities in Cambodia. And we have the pleasure to have him here in our VOA studio in Washington, D.C. to discuss more about these opportunities. Ripsu, Minister Sun Jantal. Yes, sir. On this particular trip, um, how do you go about selling Cambodia, so to say? Well, first of all, sir, thank you very much for inviting me to the studio. Just want to let you know uh, the trip that we made this time is what we call reverse uh, trade mission, uh, where the U.S. ambassador has organized the program for us, and we came to the state with uh, 20 companies uh, from Cambodia to try to expand trade and investment between the two countries. And uh, we meet very various uh, businessmen in LA, uh, in Seattle, and uh, we come to uh, Washington. We also meet major U.S. company uh, like uh, General Electric, like Bechtel, Haynes, and Chevron, Walmart, Coca-Cola, in order to explain to them uh, the potential, investment potential in the country. Mm. You yourself worked in a big U.S. company, American company, uh, General Electric, uh, before. Um, from your perspective, what what are the sectors that Cambodia would like to have American com more American companies invest more? Well, we'd like to attract more uh, light industry. Uh, food processing industry is important for Cambodia. Agro industry is important. Tourism sector also important. Infrastructure also is an important sector. So uh, we uh, pitch to them all the investment opportunity in a country. Why? They said, why should we go to Cambodia? We have a very good reason to go to Cambodia. First, we provide macro uh, economic stability. Cambodian government is pro-business government because we consider the private sector is an engine of our economic growth. Our investment law provides the most generous investment incentives in the region. We have one-stop service in our country that uh, look at the application, provide information, look at application, approve the investment. Mm -hmm. So the investor do not have to go from ministry to ministry to get things done. Our labor force, labor force very young, dynamic, hard worker, abandon, abandon natural resources, land in our country. So that's what we present to investors in the U.S. and also potential investors around the world of our opportunity and our potential. Uh, in uh, in Cambodia, hmm. so I hope that you know if they can compare compare what we offer in Cambodia, although we are a small country of 15 million consumer, but they have to look at Cambodia not as a standalone country of 15 million consumer, but you Cambodia is a platform to serve the ASEAN consumer of 600 million, or the world market, or the ASEAN plus the six partner in the region which uh, comprise uh, over 3.4 billion consumer. So mm -hmm. it's very, very good opportunity for them to invest in the country and serve those markets. Mm -hmm. um, American investors would look also at um, the issue of corruption as well as the competitiveness of the market. And on both uh, points, Cambodia has slipped in the uh, last year to you know, the lowest in, or one of the lowest in ASEAN. Um, how do you explain to them, to investors who have those concerns? Well, the uh, corruption does exist in Cambodia, and corruption also does exist in many other countries. But we're not proud to, to have the report that you know, corruption uh, uh, in Cambodia is rampant. You know? We're not proud of that. So, but we have done something about it. The Cambodian government has passed the law on anti-corruption law. We also create anti-corruption unit to fight against corruption. The government official must declare their asset when they take the position. They must declare their asset again when they leave the position. So that is the major thing that we have been doing the last couple of years in order to do the corruption. Two, we automate some of the processes from the manual process to the automation uh, uh, processes uh, to support the private sector. For example, at the Ministry of Commerce, today we issue certificate of origin for exporter. They need 
the CO in order to export the product from Cambodia. We're doing it manually, mm -hmm. but now I'm putting it online. So they can provide information on the internet to us. We release it on the internet. They can issue, they can print their own CO. Come with registration, done manually today. We are in a process automating that also. Gonna be online, come with registration. So this we take the interfaces between the government official and the private sector. Mm -hmm. When you reduce the interface between the government official and the private sector, then you can cut down on unofficial payment because there's no chance for the government official to meet, to demand, to demand unofficial payment or let's call it a spade a spade corruption. Mm. So that's what we are doing today mm. to, to, do, uh, to reduce corruption. The Kabun government also increased the salary of a civil servant 25% every year mm -hmm. to, so that they can have a, a better salary, a better salary. In addition to that, the government of Cambodia also allowed the line ministry uh, to uh, reserve a portion of the fees, that uh, official fee that we collect from uh, providing the service to the private sector, to use that as a bonus, additional bonus to the worker, to the staff of the line ministry. So a different prong, mm. prong that we're doing right now in order to combat, in order to reduce corruption. Mm. Now corruption will lead to, you know, to uh, make Cambodia is not competitive. So that's one of the issue. Another issue in terms of competitiveness, again, processes. We must eliminate, we're in a process of reform to reduce the red tape, to red tape to make us more competitive. We improve our infrastructure mm -hmm. to reduce logistic costs. Mm -hmm. We work on uh, uh, building the power plan in order to reduce the price of our energy costs, mm -hmm. the electricity costs. We work on to improve our education. We shift to vocational training in order to, to provide the skilled labor to the investor. Mm -hmm. So we're doing many, many areas. We do reform various areas to make Cambodia a competitive place to do business. You mentioned salaries and cost of labor is part of the competitiveness. Um, I, I would imagine that on your trip, you were asked about the, the, the demand by workers and unions of uh, a minimum salary of $160. How, do you, how did you respond to them? Well, uh, today, the Kabun government, working with ILO, working with World Bank, uh, trying those organizations, ILO, World Bank, and Labor Ministry, and other line ministry, are working together to come up with a scientific calculation of the minimum wage. We cannot just plug the number of the air, so that here the number should be. We need a complete calculation. Look at the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We want to make sure that we're still competitive. If we raise our minimum wage too high, that make Cambodia not competitive, the factory will be closed down, move to other places cheaper, or the investor, new investor, will not come to the country. So we look at different angle mm -hmm. in order to come up with the minimum wage to, uh, to make Cambodia still competitive. We are looking at the total forest. We do not look at a single tree. Mm -hmm. And that what we're doing today. It takes time. It takes time. So we're doing everything we can today. We want our people to earn more and at the same time Cambodia still competitive to compete with our neighboring country that we be able to attract foreign investor to invest in our country, mm -hmm. to create jobs, to create better paying job for our people. Mm. Um, as commerce, uh, talk about neighboring countries, as commerce minister, um, are you concerned about the increasing tensions between China and Vietnam, who are two of the largest trading partners with Cambodia? Well, you know, Vietnam and China are our friends. Both are our friends. So we hope that our friends can resolve the differences peacefully rather than resort to, uh, to military conflict. But uh, and they part of, Vietnam part of ASEAN, Cambodia part of ASEAN. So as a whole, ASEAN worked very hard today with China to move from a DOC, Declaration on, on Conduct, 
to call a contact to COC in order to govern, in order to govern the South China Sea. So we have worked very hard with our, our, our ASEAN member state to resolve that issue. Now, besides Vietnam has a problem with China, mm -hmm. Thailand has their own mm -hmm. internal problem also, internal problem also. But we, Cambodia, do not want to take advantage mm -hmm. of the issues, problem of our neighboring country. But having said that, we want to present, we present to the world that Cambodia is a peaceful nation, mm -hmm. rule of law. We provide macroeconomic stability to the investor. We are pro-business government. Mm -hmm. We provide generous investment incentives. We very competitive. We are in the heart, what I call the center of gravity mm -hmm. for ASEAN. Mm -hmm. So we present ourselves, we pitch that to investors, and we hope that the investor will invest in the country to serve to serve the ASEAN market. So we, again, people say, oh, you should not take advantage of, of your neighboring country. We not take advantage. We just present mm -hmm. ourselves as a country that, that, that's stable, that can provide all the labor to the investor mm -hmm. and provide all the incentives for them to com invest in the country and be competitive. In addition, I want to let you know that Cambodia received the what we call EBA, everything but arms. You can ship good from Cambodia, produced in Cambodia, made in Cambodia mm -hmm. to the European Union without paying tax. And that is our competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis our neighboring country. Mm. I have one last question. As you conclude your trip here, how does Cambodia feel about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and about the U.S. pivot to Asia, of which the TPP is part? Okay. First of all, Cambodia is not part of the negotiation mm -hmm. of the TPP. We are part of ASEAN, and ASEAN negotiate called ASEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Mm -hmm. So that ASEAN 10, plus China, plus Korea, Japan, India, New Zealand, and Australia. So 10 plus 6 called AS, uh, ASEP. That comprise 3.4 billion consumer combined GDP of 21 trillion US dollar. And we hope to conclude the negotiation of ASEP by 2015. Now, in ASEAN, there are four countries, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, and the Philippines are members or uh, a member of the TPP, they negotiate that. Having said that, it does not mean that Cambodia does not want to be on the bandwagon of the TPP. When I met with Ambassador Michael Froman, I informed him that, that we want to be part of the TPP also whenever the time, the time is right. But we are preparing ourselves now. We're not gonna wait until the TPP, uh, TPP uh, become a real, uh, realized, TPP realized, and then we have not done anything. Mm -hmm. So we are doing something right now. We have worked with the US on a bit bilateral investment treaty with the U.S. So when we conclude that, we work on the, the labor issues, we work on the human rights issues, that will prepare us to be a next member, if you will, of the TPP. So we will look into that very favorably to be part of the TPP, which is, like you said, mm -hmm. is important. It's another big market. Mm -hmm. The TPP does not have China in there, mm -hmm. but have Japan, mm -hmm. have USA, mm -hmm. also very big very big uh, your trading block, if you will. So we want to get ready by that time. Am I correct to say that you feel quite positively about the U.S. pivot to Asia? Yeah. I, I, like I said, I feel very positive. And you know, let's say Cambodia is a friend of everyone in the world. So we want to deal, we want to do business with everyone. We want to do business in the U.S. We want to expand our trade investment with the U.S. We want to expand trade with Canada. With, uh, yeah, with, uh, with uh, South America, if you will, with European, mm -hmm. with Middle East, with African country. Because at the end of the day, trade and investment that can create jobs, that can make a standard of living of our people better. Mm -hmm. Not our people, but also the country that we trade with. Mm -hmm. It's got to be two-way. It's mm -hmm. got to be win-win partnership between a country that do business with. If you only have zero-sum game, it's not going to be a good agreement, not going to be a good FTA. So what we do, want to make sure that both countries benefit from what were the agreement, mm. the trade and investment policies. 
I want to thank you very much, Minister Sun Chan Tho, for talking to VOA and uh, Som Junip Lee. Thank you so much. Thank you.